let's look at some basic database concepts. Now what I have on my screen right now is a simple database and it is a list of student names and information about who their advisor is, what campus they are, the advisor is on, and the advisor's office number. So a database typically consists of tables of data and information and then that table is broken down into records and then the records are broken down further into fields of information. So in a table, when you are looking at the information, all of the information about, in this case, one student is in a row. So records go in rows. And all of the information about one student is contained in a single record. Now records are broken up even further into fields. And so our fields are going in columns. So we have the first field is their ID, second field would be their first name, the next field is their last name, and so forth. So records are typically displayed in rows and field information is in columns. So each of our fields has a unique name, right? We couldn't have two fields with the same name of last or two fields with the same name of major. Another key concept to keep in mind in developing databases is a primary key. Now your primary key is a unique identifier. In this case, the ID, this would be a primary key and it would require that no two records use the same value again. So you could think of it like your social security number or a student ID, maybe it's an account number that you have with a company, driver's license number. These are all things that uniquely identify you from anybody else. So our database will typically have a primary key in your table that you set up. So we have records which are rows, columns which are field information, and this is an example of what's called a flat file database. It's just information, each record, each row contains all the information about one particular student. It doesn't give us a lot of opportunity to connect information from multiple tables. You can start to see here, we start to get a lot of repetition in the advisor names and also in the major names. So a flat file database can be okay for small amounts of data, but when you start getting into larger amounts of data, you start to see repetition in, then you end up wanting to move to a relational database. So you can see here, for example, the advisors, their names are repeated multiple times, and the information that goes with those advisors are also repeated multiple times, like the campus and their office. So a flat file database enable a lot of repetition. So if we had hundreds of students and hundreds of advisors, then this information gets to be a little bit lofty to try to manage. Working in a relational database gives us the opportunity to break data up into its own type of information. So a relational database would allow us to have a table of just students. We could have a table that just identifies majors. And then we could have a separate table of advisors. And we could even have a separate table of campus information and then relate those to each other. So here's an example. Okay, this is a database and I've used open office in order to create this database but I have separate tables and I've broken out a table for advisors and campuses majors and students and I've opened them up over to the side here and just so that you can start to get a feel for how this information will relate to each other so just like in our flat file database we have information here on their ID and their first name and their last name and then we're identifying what their major is and who their advisor is. 
Now rather than writing out the advisor's last name, as we've done in the other example, and then their office number and their campus, we can use a reference to the advisor table to say, okay, anybody that is a zero, their advisor is going to be advisor zero in the advisor table. And then this table holds all of the details for the advisors. So if we wanted to change somebody's advisor, we simply come up in here and change the number of the advisor that we want to associate with them. So then automatically this link connects the student to the correct advisor. Whereas in our flat file database, we'd have to go in and type in the information and manually change it. So not a very productive process. So now here by just changing one reference, we can connect it to this particular advisor. And you can see that the names that we have for our majors are the, the short code name. If we ever wanted to use a long version that would be more, make more sense to maybe a, a student or somebody else, then we could reference the major code in another table of all of the majors written out. So we can have the code version for the major name, but then we can also have a full text version of it. So by creating multiple tables of data that are related to each other, Right? We have all the major information, all the campuses, all the advisors, and all the students. We can easily reference the information from one to the other. Now let's take a look at how this looks visually. Now I've opened up this database into the relationship view. And you can see how the information is connected to each other. So the advisor ID, which is a unique identifier, that's what these little keys are for. Those are the primary keys or the unique identifiers. So that means no, no two advisors will have the same ID. No two campus codes will have the same name. Same thing with the majors. No two students will have the same ID. But we can see here that the advisor ID is connected to the advisor in the students table. If I move this down here you can see how this information starts to relate maybe a little better. So the advisor ID is connected to the advisor ID in the student table and their major is connected to the major code and the advisors table, the campus code, is connected to the campus table. You can see the actual relationships of how this information is relating to the different tables in the database. So that's just an overview of some of the terminology that's used with databases and the difference between a flat file database and a relational database.